Now let's take a look at certain key parts of these new inferences, these new kind of arguments, these inductive arguments. Notice our first examples are almost all logical logic students did well on the test. Now, sometimes it's just going to, we're having an argument, might sound good. Most logic students did well on the test. Some logic students did well on the test. Well, that might, between that and John's a logic student, might give you some reason. I don't know if it's strong enough or not. But notice, and then none of the students did well on the logic test. But that's really no one, none, not a single one. But if we notice in these cases, uh, the are, you know, the strength in terms of the how probable, how reasonable these premises make the conclusion. We started, you know, on top where the premises make the conclusion highly probable. There's a really strong connection, not quite a deductive connection. It's a really strong connection between the premises and conclusion. And as we go down the list of arguments, the connection between the premises and the conclusion and those inferences becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. In fact, when you're down to some, you're not sure that it supports the conclusion at all. And you know the last one, which, by the way, is probably a deductive argument. It's probably zero probability, none not a one does. But notice what we have in all of these cases. We now have a new set of quantifiers. Remember, quantifiers indicate quantity. That was part of predicate logic. We had all and we had no there and we had some. Here we have almost all, most, some. So they're quantifiers indicating how many. And the more there are, the greater the quantity there are, the more likely it is that the conclusion follows from those premises.